As modern grocery shoppers, we try to be engaged and knowledgeable about nutrition. From salt to sugar, the movement is on to regain control of what we put on the table. But there's a lot of confusing information to wade through. Studies show that 80% of shoppers come across conflicting nutritional data, and 59% doubt the choices they're making for their families. What consumers aren't confused about, though, is the need for a healthy change. Sugar is a carbohydrate found naturally in a host of different foods, from lactose and milk to fructose and fruits. There are two types of sugar, naturally occurring sugar, such as those we just mentioned, and added or free sugars that include refined table sugar or sucrose, as well as concentrated sources like syrups. Health organizations advise us to cut back on these free sugars. The average person in the United States consumes around 17 teaspoons, or 71 grams, of added sugar per day, which far exceeds recommended limits. So where does your added sugar come from? 40% comes from soda and energy drinks. 30% comes from grain-based desserts, fruit drinks, dairy desserts, and candy. And the rest of it comes from foods such as syrup, honey, bread, pasta, or sauces. So why is sugar added to so many foods? One functional property of sugar is preservation. Sugar is very good at absorbing water, which helps extend the shelf life of foods. Water is necessary for things like yeast and bacteria to flourish, so the more sugar something contains, the longer it is able to hold off the offending growth. Sugar is an important part of the fermentation process, and is used for this property in items like soy sauce, yogurt, bread, and beer. Sugar not only sweetens foods, but also changes their texture. For example, sugar affects the way ice crystals form in ice cream by causing the freezing point of the mixture to drop. This creates smaller ice crystals, giving frozen desserts a desirable, creamy quality. The last, and most obvious reason sugar is added to food is to sweeten it. Sweetness improves on the palatability of food, and is one of the few tastes we are born with. This is why sugar is frequently added to healthy foods marketed towards children. They are more likely to choose a sweet option over an unsweetened one. In other foods not necessarily made for children, sugar plays an important role in balancing other flavors present in the dish. Sugar is added to foods to enhance some flavors and counteract excessive bitterness or acidity. Foods with a lot of added sugars contribute extra calories to your diet, but provide little nutritional value. According to USDA data, people who consume the most sugar have the lowest intakes of essential nutrients, especially vitamins A, C, B12, and calcium. The trade-off is especially dangerous for children and teens, who simultaneously consume the most sugar and need the most nutrients. All forms of sugar promote tooth decay by allowing bacteria to multiply and grow. The more often and longer you snack on foods and beverages with either natural sugar or added sugar, the more likely you are to develop cavities, especially if you don't practice good oral hygiene. In a study published in 2014 in JAMA Internal Medicine, an association between a high sugar diet and a greater risk of dying from heart disease was found. Over the course of the 15-year study, people who got 17% to 21% of their calories from added sugar had a 38% higher risk of dying from cardiovascular disease, compared with those who consumed 8% of their calories as added sugar. Basically, the higher the intake of added sugar, the higher the risk for heart disease. How sugar actually affects heart health is not completely understood, but it appears to have several indirect connections. For instance, high amounts of sugar overload the liver. Your liver metabolizes sugar the same way as alcohol and converts dietary carbohydrates to fat. Over time, this can lead to a greater accumulation of fat which may turn into fatty liver disease, a contributor to diabetes which raises your risk for heart disease. Consuming too much added sugar can raise blood pressure and increase chronic inflammation, both of which are pathological pathways to heart disease. Consuming too much added sugar over long periods of time can also affect the natural balance of hormones that drive critical functions in the body. Eating sugar increases levels of glucose in the bloodstream, which leads the pancreas to release insulin. Higher levels of insulin, in turn, cause the body to store more food calories as fat. Insulin also affects a hormone called leptin, which is our natural appetite suppressant that tells our brains we are full and can stop eating. Imbalanced insulin levels, along with high consumption of certain sugars, such as fructose, has been linked to a condition called leptin resistance, in which the brain no longer hears the message to stop eating, thus promoting weight gain and obesity. To avoid these effects, expert panels worldwide have made consistent recommendations on daily sugar intake. The American Heart Association recommends no more than 6 teaspoons, or 25 grams, of added sugar per day for women, and 9 teaspoons, or 38 grams for men. 
That is in line with the World Health Organization's recommendation that no more than 10% of an adult's calories, and ideally less than 5%, should come from added sugar or from natural sugars in honey, syrups, and fruit juice. For a 2,000 calorie diet, 5% would be 25 grams. Sugar goes by many different names, depending on its source and how it was made. This can make it hard to identify added sugars, even when you read ingredient lists and food labels. You should check for ingredients ending in OSE, that's the chemical name for many types of sugar, such as fructose, glucose, maltose, and dextrose. Other common types of added sugars are cane juice and cane syrup, corn sweeteners and high fructose corn syrup, fruit juice concentrate and nectars, malt or maple syrup, molasses. To reduce the added sugars in your diet, try these tips. Drink water, other calorie-free drinks, or low-fat milk instead of sugary sodas or sports drinks. That goes for coffee drinks, too. When you drink fruit juice, make sure it's 100% fruit juice, not juice drinks that have added sugar. Better yet, eat the fruit rather than drink the juice to get the fiber as well. Choose breakfast cereals with less sugar. Opt for reduced sugar varieties of syrups, jams, and jellies. Choose fresh fruit for dessert instead of cakes, cookies, pies, ice cream, and other sweets. Choose nutrient-rich snacks such as vegetables, fruits, low-fat cheese, whole grain crackers, and low-fat, low-calorie yogurt instead of candy, pastries, and cookies. Instead of sugar and recipes, you can try things like cinnamon, nutmeg, almond extract, vanilla, ginger, or lemon. Focus on whole foods, not processed ones. Added sugars only dominate the packaged and processed foods, the same products that offer less nutrition overall than whole foods. You also get sugar naturally from carbohydrates, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and low-fat dairy sources. A healthy diet focuses on these whole foods. They provide high-fiber carbohydrates that have a low glycemic index. This way, your body gets a slow and steady rise in blood sugar instead of a sudden sugar rush and subsequent crash. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time we post. You can also give this video a like, share it with your friends, and if you have the means and want to support us, you can do it on Patreon at patreon.com slash notcomplicated.